The Honourable Annette King. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Prime Minister. Does he stand by his statement that, quote, low income New Zealanders are being looked after by a national government? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Yes. The Honourable Annette King. To question, Mr. Speaker, in light of that answer, what does he say to Mrs. Alexander, interviewed on Campbell Live last night? whose basic grocery items have increased by 20.4%, going from $123.30 to $148 per week in just eight months. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, um, the first thing I'd say is I I didn't actually see the Campbell Live uh, show, but then, mind you, I don't see Coronation Street either, like the Labour Party caucus. But, Mr Speaker... Point of order, the Honourable Premier. Now look, order, order, order. Apologise, Honourable Member. The member, resume a seat for the moment. Now look, members are entitled to call a point of order. And when members make unhelpful state comments and answering questions, it will tend to lead to disorder. And, that, and members are entitled to call a point of order and for that to be heard in silence. And my patience is wearing a bit thin with some government members uh, on these points of order. They might not like the point of order, but a member has a right. And so long as it's a point of order, if it's not a point of order, I'll sit the member down very fast. But the member has a right. The Honourable Trevor Mallard. Uh, Mr Speaker, I think it's fair to say that standing up and sitting down fast is not quite what I can I do. I apologise to the uh, Honourable uh, Member. And, and there was no disrespect in not sitting down quickly before. I apologise. Uh, Mr Speaker, the, my point of order is a simple one. That gratuitous comment uh, about the television habits uh, of Labour Party members, um, especially with regard to uh, foreign-made uh, programmes, Sue, was unnecessary. And I think that is a order. I think that is a perfectly fair point. I mean, the, the question didn't contain a lot of... It asked whether the Prime Minister had seen uh, a certain programme and, with, and uh, what he had to say about that. Now, admittedly, that's, you know, there, there's some licence there, but a, gratuitous, a comment quite that gratuitous is always going to lead to disorder. And I'll hear the Right Honourable Prime Minister on S- the point Mr. of Mr Speaker... Uh- from memory, Coronation Street's been on for 50 years. I'm surprised no, that the Labour Party... Order, no, no, order! No, no. <laughs> now, I've, I've got to... That was not a point of order. And uh, it would be a terrible thing for the Speaker to deprive the opposition of the chance to question the Prime Minister. Let me put it that way, and I don't want to deprive the opposition of that opportunity. But we won't have any more of that. Uh, the uh, order. The uh, now, as the prime minister, the prime minister though should answer the question that was asked. Uh, okay, Mr. Speaker, right I, I didn't premise. see the Campbell live show, but um, one thing I am advised is that that family uh, was still eligible for government programmes, working for families, accommodation supplement. If they had a mortgage, their mortgage rates would have gone down. And apparently, as the show showed, um, there are fluctuations in grocery prices. And apparently, this month the grocery prices would have been lower. The honourable Annette King. Supplementary question, Mr Speaker. Does he stand by his statement, as reported on Campbell Live last night, that after the tax cuts, quote, no one is worse off, end quote, and if so, how does the Alexander's $11 a week tax cut go anywhere near compensating for the $25 a week increase in their food costs alone? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, yes. The Honourable Annette King. Uh, Mr Speaker, how does does the Alexander's $11 a week tax cut go anywhere near compensating for the $25 a week increase they have faced in their basic food costs? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, I don't know the personal circumstances of the family. I can't confirm it's the $11 tax cut. And Mr Speaker, I've learnt not to trust the the members' uh, numbers. Point of order, the Honourable Trevor Mallard. Order. Order. Now, I've been tough on government members and applies to the opposition too when a point of order is being heard. The Honourable Trevor Mallard. Uh, Mr Mr. Speaker, again, it's a question of whether the Prime Minister should make that gratuitous flick at the member when I think 
80% of the members know in the House that the member is quoting direct figures uh, that, that are easily authenticated uh, if the Prime Minister wanted them to be. Order. Well, of course, the Prime Minister doesn't know that. And, and I think it is when members quote, you know, ask this type of primary and then, then quote details in relation to a particular person, uh, you can't expect the minister, any minister, necessarily have that information. Now, if I get too tough on ministers in responding, the place to get as boring as, you know, we don't want to become totally boring place. Um, but I, and I've pulled up the Prime Minister a couple of times on gratuitous comments, and I think we've got to be a little bit reasonable. This is, you know, this is a place where there's a bit of give and take and a bit of, a bit of um, you know, a few comments that are perhaps uh, uh, barbs are hurled across the House. And if I try to stop all of that, it, it'll destroy the character of the place. I just ask members to be reasonable. I'm not sure that was totally unreasonable. The Honourable Trevor Mallard. The point of order. I, I, I think, and maybe I didn't express myself clearly enough in the original uh, point of order, I think it's fine for people to dispute the figures or say that they haven't seen them, but to say that a member is not to be trusted is something, Sue, which is an implication uh, that is likely to lead to disorder. Well, I hear the member on that. I would ask ministers not to do that. To, uh, no problem in disputing figures, but to say a member can't be trusted, I accept the point the member makes. Uh, the Honourable Annette King, supplementary question. What message is he giving New Zealanders when he refuses to visit a food bank? refuses to meet with Melissa Voice from Timaru, who asked him to walk a week in her shoes, then refuses to appear on Campbell Live to talk about the cost of living after a very thorough investigation by TV3 on the real issues New Zealanders are facing at the moment. Right on the Mr, Mr Speaker, one of the criticisms from the opposition in there, I mean, uh, in my time as Prime Minister, is that I spend a lot of time around New Zealand. I do do a lot of time visiting... Uh, New Zealanders and their place of work, uh, their homes and their place of enjoyment, uh, I think they have a good sense of what New Zealanders are going through. Question number four, Louise Upson.